Well, very good afternoon, everybody. I want to welcome you to the Advanced Smartphone Settings Part Dose, Part Two, Part Number Dose. Um, I want to review something from yesterday. I put it on the top of the sheet before we go on today because I was a little bit rushed in getting through this yesterday. We were talking about the settings general and about. If you remember that, that's where we finished yesterday. It was in settings, general, and about. And if you scroll down a bit, we were talking about serial number and Wi-Fi address. We got kind of, I kind of went through that briefly because it was five o'clock and everybody was like, okay, it's, it's too long. So we, I want to go about that again, serial number and Wi-Fi address. The purpose of a serial number is if your device gets lost and they find it, they can find it via the serial number. Serial number. I am 100% sure that some of you before have signed into a website before and it said, we don't recognize this device, we need additional verification to allow you to log in. Right. Why that is, is every time you sign into a website, it sends your username, your password, and your Wi-Fi address to that website. Your Wi-Fi address is the serial number of your Wi-Fi card. As I was saying the other day, someone stole my phone by mistake, and you know what was amazing? It was, they didn't have an iPhone 6 Plus. They didn't have anything like that. They had an iPhone 5S. And I helped them set up, and my phone disappears from the table. I'm like, oh my. My lifeline. What happened? But I have captured the Wi-Fi address, or what's known as the MAC address as well, of my phone. Therefore, yeah. How did you get to that? So settings, yeah. general, yeah. About. about. So it's where we ended last time. So settings, general, about. And I actually have my Wi-Fi address right in there. So I had my Wi-Fi address recorded in our iCafe system and where you log in and out of Celebrity Wi-Fi. Plus I have a copy of it as well. And I was able to actually trace the person walking around the ship with my phone. Here's the funny thing. How do you, that is, how you do that? I cannot explain that to you, unfortunately. Oh, well, how I traced it is I saw which Wi-Fi router they were connected to. So you only see one Celebrity Wi-Fi. Right. There are 700 Celebrity Wi-Fi's all over the ship. Oh my God. All network. So they're all networked together and they just show us a single address, but I can tell you exactly where something is. And what's cool is I can actually trace three Wi Fi routers at a time and triangulate where you are, much like GPS. And I can see it's called a heat map. That's how we can see the coverage. When someone says, I don't have coverage, I can actually look in the cabin and see the device that's connected to the cabin. Now, we do not use this for malicious purposes. Other companies do. So other companies do. An example of that is Walt Disney World or any malls or places that provide free Wi-Fi. Because when they provide free Wi-Fi, they'll generally ask you to log in. So they can build a profile on you. Then they track you via your Wi-Fi address. They can see how many times you come back to the mall and different things like that. Disney can actually, you know the wait times in Disney? They used to do the wait times by tapping a little card when you went in. Now they actually put a Wi-Fi antenna at the start of the, uh, the queue, and they put a Wi-Fi antenna at the end of the queue, and your phone seamlessly switches from queue to queue. So this is not a phone, it's a tracking device, essentially. Right. Now, in the Celebrity Edge ship, what I was saying the other day, the mm -hmm. Edge ship is gonna use your phone as your room key, is gonna right. use your phone to control your lights, mm -hmm. gonna use your phone as everything. How is it gonna know it's your phone? Well, because what you're gonna do is you're gonna sign into the Celebrity app, it's not going to be a separate app. It's going to be part of the celebrity app. You're going to sign on the celebrity app. It's going to get your Mac address, your Wi-Fi address, and then that's going to keep it assigned for the duration of the cruise to your phone. So it's able to sign it to your account and everything like that. So just the same way you would make an internet account, essentially, on the ship, you're going to log into the celebrity account, and if you already have it there, and it's going to link your Wi-Fi address, and if you have another device, it'll link the Wi-Fi address, so you don't have to sign on every time. There's no authentication needed. Does that make sense? Class before you take the cruise? If you don't have a smartphone <laughs> and you come on, so you ask a very interesting question. Um, as of right now, I will be the person opening the edge. So my plan is uh, before the lifeboat drill, we're going to do something in the theater that's going to explain to you how to use the, uh, the app to order drinks and do all that. I can't even tell you more than what I just said because the mm -hmm. app does a lot more. You'll be able to open your, well, I can say this, you'll be able to open your balcony from the app, you can hit the button on the app, you can do it. You can do this all without internet. That's what's very cool about it. You want the internet. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, so here's an important thing. On an Android, it's buried. It's really buried. I will take a look with your Android after where the Wi-Fi address is. You have to go into settings and then about phone and then status. On most Android phones, that's where you go. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah you got it. That's exactly where it is. But if I go in, I can get that. Now, here's the thing that's important. Your serial number is written everywhere. 
your serial numbers on your box, on your receipt, on the phone. I said the other day, it's actually printed very small on the back of the phone. I can't see it. My eyes are not that good. I'm only 29, but I still can't. I don't have 20-20 vision. But the Wi-Fi address is only yeah. here. Yeah. Wi-Fi address is something very useful. People lose their phones all the time. I'm going to tell you, what happened the other day was not the first time my phone was stolen. Stolen. <laughs> was not <laughs> disappeared. Yeah, that's a better word. Uh, was not the first time my phone disappeared. Was not the second time my phone disappeared. Was not even the tenth time my phone disappears. My phone disappears quite often. So when I get a new device, like when I get my new Samsung phone, what's the first thing I'm going to do? Copy, Copy the Wi-Fi address. Where do you keep it? Ah, well, what I do is I take a screenshot. Right. Where do you think that screenshot's going to automatically go? Exactly. Google Photos. And your Google, Google, Google Photos. photos. Oh, Google Photos. Right. So what's cool is, so if we take a screenshot, now how you take a screenshot on an iPhone is you press the button that turns the screen on, and you press the, uh, the home button at the same time briefly. So really quick, yeah. and I'll take a screenshot. And what's cool is inside of Google Photos, there is actually a screenshots folder. Yeah. So if you go in... And you go in the search, there's actually a screenshots folder, and that will show you all of your screenshots. Now, what I do is I make sure I get both the serial number and the Wi-Fi address in the screenshot. Therefore, even if I don't know what the device is, I can put in the serial number on Apple's website, and it'll tell me it's an iPhone 7. I'll go, okay, that's, that's my iPhone 7. Okay, that's my iPhone 8. I'll show you, uh, not iPhone 8, hold on. Wait. I'll show you lunch. This is what I had for lunch. This is, this is a... Something healthy. Oh, it was great. It was a giant plate of macaroni and cheese and an episode of Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. That was, uh, that was lunch. That was the last thing in my Google Photos before then. But um, oh, Look at those pictures. Yeah, we took them during the other class. That's you the, couldn't tell farther away. Yeah, you couldn't tell farther away. But that's the one taken directly, and that's the one taken indirectly, and then that's the picture of all of you. In the, right. Oh, see, in there the, we are. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> so I can go in, and i got a pan over there. And the cool thing is, all of this is already in my Google Photos, but that's a question for another day. We've already answered that, and we'll go back to that at another time. So we want to make sure we have a screenshot of the Wi-Fi address. What's cool is, I've traced people's phones before because they've lost it. A real quick story is someone said, we lost our phone, we went to guest relations, we checked it wasn't there. I put a tracer, I'm like, no, it's in the safe in the back of guest relations. Oh my God. And I went and walked down with them to guest relations and it was in the safe in the back of guest relations. We do not use that, okay? We do not use that. I only use it when I need to find a phone yeah. or if I leave my phone somewhere. Now Disney and Disney Cruise Line, on the other hand, you can track your children based on the Wi-Fi location of their device. It's actually, what? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they also have they also have these special tracking bracelets called Magic Bands that Disney sells, yeah. and they have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and NFC and everything. Yeah. Uh, I was having trouble with my phone at one point. We called up Apple, and they wanted I forgot which numbers, but below that they asked me for. Aha! Uh -huh. So this is what they, I know what they asked you for. They asked you for the I M E I number. Yeah. What's that? The shh, over the corner. Shh. I don't want the camera to pick up your conversation. It will, ladies, and it's going to show up on the internet. Okay, they don't listen to me. Okay, I'll just talk louder. IMEI is the serial number of your cell phone chip. The IMEI is the serial number of your cell phone chip. So that's the. So you have a couple of different things. You have a Wi-Fi address. You have a Bluetooth address. We're going to talk about Bluetooth a bit later on in, when we talk about AirDrop. And the IMEI and the ICCID are the serial numbers of the cellular connectivity inside of there. Because laptops have Wi-Fi addresses and Bluetooth addresses, but only cell phones have cellular addresses. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is where this class normally starts. It's with something called invert colors inside of accessibility. Now, Apple and their devices, I'm going to pass over here our phone. And let me grab, Apple on their devices has all kinds of cool accessibility features, but I don't know if this iPad has any charge to it anymore, but we will find out. Oh, it does. Okay. See, it's 9.14. I have a picture of cell phone. It's not 9.14. Everything at Apple happens at 9.14. I don't know why. Who else is an Android person? I know I have another Android person. Let me pass it, let me pass it back here. He can see a little bit closer. Um, but I have one more Android, actually. Uh, one more iPhone. So I want you to go into settings and then general, and then accessibility. Mm -hmm. So settings, general, accessibility. And we're going to be talking about accessibility. Now, sometimes no matter how bright the screen on the phone gets, it is not bright enough to be seen out in the sun. Perfect example of that was when I was at the Dead Sea. So I'm at the Dead Sea. I'm going to the Dead Sea. 
And a guest comes up to me and they go, why are you going like this to see your phone? I was like, because it's an apartment. She said, what you can do is you can just turn on invert colors. So it's in settings, general, and accessibility. Now it used to be right here. There used to be something that said invert colors right there. Now in iOS 10, it's in another folder called display accommodations. So I click in display accommodations and I say invert colors. Go ahead and do it. And it's going to change the colors of your phone. It's going to make it so you can actually see it outside. Now here's the, yeah. Is that on the iPad? Yep. Settings general, accessibility. If you're on iOS 10, it'll be in something called display accommodations and invert colors. I don't have it. Of course you do. <laughs> You're still in about. You got to go into general accessibility, display accommodations, invert colors. Now, here's the important thing. What this does is it makes your screen a lot less reflective. Here's the thing to understand, though. I want you to look at the screen of my watch. What is the primary color coming off of the screen of my watch? Black. Black. Now, the primary color on this phone screen is black. Black. On the current iPhones and iPads, it costs electricity, not money, but it costs electricity to show the color black. Oh. On the Apple Watch, it does not cost electricity to show the color black. On my friend Samsung S70 has over here, it does not cost electricity to show the color black. On future iPhones and iPads that may use something called AMOLED panels, the color black is free. Therefore, being in invert color mode would also save you a significant amount of battery life because everywhere it was black, the screen would just be off. Why this screen, this screen has one giant light in the back of it that's lighting it up. Samsung screens, it's, just, it's very strange that Apple and future iPhones is probably going to use a Samsung screen, are AMOLED and each individual pixel is lit up so when something needs to go black, it just turns off. But this is designed so you can see a lot better outdoors. You don't have as much reflectiveness on a black surface. It kind of lies back to, you remember we were talking about the black around the camera? Yeah. You don't have as much reflectivity on a black surface as you would on a white surface, just to give you a little idea there. We're going to turn that off. A cool trick, if you want to turn it on easier, is you can ask our friend Siri to turn it on and off. You can go, hey Siri, turn on invert colors. I know she's not going to work. So let's try this again. Turn on invert colors. Oh, Siri. She's asleep. Just say invert colors. Invert colors. And she'll normally behave, but she doesn't want to behave because, because I want to show you something. But she can turn on and turn off invert. Oh, don't even try. Just, 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 can I help just don't even try. Um, Sorry, I'm having trouble with the Yeah, it's okay. Don't worry about it. That's why... That's why what happens is when we're all on iLounge, things go wrong. That's why I didn't do it for the Google Photos class, because I didn't know for the Google Photos class. So what we've got is you could ask, I'm telling you, you could ask Siri to do it. Now, we're still in accessibility. We're going to click back one in accessibility, and we're going to go to where it says reduce motion. Where? Scroll down a bit. It should say reduce motion inside of accessibility, not inside of display accommodations. It will say reduce motion. Now. What reduced motion does, I want you to pay attention to my screen real quick because it's the only way you're going to see this. When I have my screen and I'm going between screens, you notice that the screen shrinks and then it blows up and then it shrinks and it blows up. That is the most graphically intensive thing most of your iPhones do because we don't play games. I don't really play games on my iPhone. So it shrinks, it blows up, it shrinks, it blows up because it's having to render every single picture. It's having to render your background and all that. If you turn on reduced motion, you give yourself 5% more battery life over your phone. So you're essentially giving yourself a hundred. Yeah, turn it on. And keep it on? And keep it on. And what's going to happen is it's just going to fade between the screens. So instead of going whoop, whoop, it's just going to go shh. It doesn't take any processing power to fade. It takes a gigantic amount of processing power to do that. Now, remember during when we talked about low power mode yesterday, it said some visual effects are turned off to save battery life. This is one of those visual effects that's turned off when you're in low power mode. So what you've now added is you've added an extra 5% to the battery on your phone, which is what's really cool. We've got an extra 5% of the battery on your phone just by turning on reduced motion. Now, the next thing we're going to do is very, very, very dangerous, and I keep myself from doing this a lot of times. It's also the hardest thing we do in the entire cruise, what we're about to do. 
we're going to talk about guided, not guided, yeah, guided access, then assistive touch. We're going to talk about guided access. Now, what guided access does, this is only on iPhones and iPads, is it locks you inside of an app. Have any of you seen those iPads that are around the ship that have the future cruise sail stuff on it that yeah. tell you about the future yeah. cruise and all that? Very cleverly done. Well, they used to not do them cleverly, and I would just go around and I would just for fun open up weird websites on them because they did not lock them inside of that application. Oh. Even if you have don't have access to the home button, you can technically, even if the iPad's in a safe thing or whatever, you can just go with four fingers, go whoop. And then you're out, and people. We, I saw people browsing the internet on them and stuff like that. So I was like, guys, you need to enable guided access. So I'm going to show you how guided access works. Guided access is going to make you a better parent or grandparent, or a worse grandparent or parent, as far as the kids are concerned. Because what you can do is you can lock people inside of apps, and you can set time limits for how long they can be in those apps as and well. <laughs> and they won't blame you. And well, they will blame you, but well, uh, so. <laughs> We're going to click back into, we're in the reduced motion, we're going to click back to accessibility and scroll all the way to the Left bottom. Down, right? Yeah, we're going to, yeah, you can leave, yeah, leave on reduced motion. Scroll all the way to the bottom to where it says guided access. Oh. You see that on the bottom? Yeah. Way down. And we're going to turn on guided access. I don't see it. All the way to the bottom in accessibility, it will be there. Learning. No, you need to be in accessibility still. Oh, okay. And then guided access on the bottom? Yes. Right. Now. When we turn on guided access, there's a button underneath that says passcode settings. Mm -hmm. You technically can use touch ID to get in and out, but our touch IDs, we're going to talk about touch ID in a couple minutes time. We're not going to use touch ID. I want you to click passcode settings and hit set guided access passcode. The passcode for everyone in this room, for the case of this experiment, is going to be 6666 or 666666, depending how many you have. So just because we're on deck six, not because I'm a devil worshiper or anything like that. It's just because we're on deck six. Sorry, I'm lost. Guided access. Turn it on. Oh, you turn it on. Okay. And then set passcode. Okay. Passcode settings. And then set passcode. Set guided access passcode. And we turn that on. And here's the important thing. Nothing's happened. We turned it on. We've enabled guided access. I'm going to show you how to really enable it in a second, but I want to make sure we've all turned it on. And we set a passcode, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're good? Yeah. Turn it on, set a passcode, cool. You're not turned on. Yes, I am. I'm turned on on the, on the previous page. Oh, okay. Now, we're going to go out of the settings app and we're going to open up our photos app. Just the, the normal, not Google Photos, just Apple Photos. You could, this will work with any app, but I know we all have photos installed on our device. Uh, if you're using one of my devices, I apologize. I have no clue what's in the photo gallery on the device I passed out to you, so uh, sorry. Uh, but. <laughs> We click on photos. Now this is the hardest thing we're going to do all cruise because what we need to do is on the home button on the front of the device, we need to triple click. Don't do it yet. A triple click is click, click, click. Okay? A triple click is not click, click, click. That's a double click with a single click behind it. You, you're laughing. Half the room, I'm going to have to come triple click for you, okay? So remember, the cadence of a triple click is click, click, click. Not on the, on the button. So it's click, click, click. It's not click, click, click. If you go click, 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 it's going to, trust me. So we go, so we're in the photos app and we go click, click, click. And it should ask us if we want to enable guided access. You see guided access right there. To enable guided access, you must be inside of an app. Okay, you cannot enable guided access any other way. You can't do it from the home screen. You can't do it from settings. You have to be in an app. And we just hit guided access. And it's, nope. And then you should see something come up a little bit different than mine. Let me show you. Hold on. I'm double clicking. Guided access. And then it should ask me if I want to start. Hold on. My, my phone is being, my phone is being a little weird. Uh, so can I steal someone's phone? I'm going to steal her phone. Start. So here's the nice thing. I can steal someone else's phone. Since you're all on the iLounge network, I can steal someone else's phone. Now the reason my phone might be being weird is because I do weird things on my phone all the time. Oh, God. No, it doesn't want to see so my we, computer. Can we hit start? Oh. Okay, no, I don't want you to hit start. I want to I wanna get someone else's phone on the screen real quick. You have to bear with me for a fraction of a second. Okay, so... We're in the Photos app, and we go click, click, click. A 
And you'll see it says start, right? Yeah. Do you see where it says options in the bottom right hand corner? Bottom left hand corner. Yeah. Yeah. It says options. If you click that options right there, it's fine. if you click that options right there, it will allow you to turn off the ability for any of the buttons to work. So if you want to give the kids a movie at a certain volume, you can lock the volume buttons from working. If you want to make it so the kids can't turn the screen on and off, you can lock the screen from working. If you want to make sure none of the buttons work, if you want to make it so that even if they turn it around, nothing works, you can do that. You can even set a time limit. Go ahead and turn on time limit down there. Yes, you do. Everybody has it. I'll show you where it is. It's in options right here in the bottom right hand corner. Can I go back from I hit start. Can I go back? Yes, you can go back. So those of you that didn't get it, it's because you didn't do the triple click properly. How do you triple click You're good. Hit options. Are we in accessibility? Yeah. Oh. Was it accessibility? Remote? My iPad is set up a little bit differently. Just pay attention to the screen. My iPad is, uh, let me get you out of here. Yeah. Because this iPad has a different code on it. Because this is my iPad normally. Okay. So if we click options, we can see all the different options. And then if you hit start, go ahead and hit start. And then try to get out of that app. So hit one of the buttons for disabling and then hit yeah, start? No, you don't need to hit any of the buttons oh, for disabling. Okay. Just hit start. Try and leave the app. No. No. I don't know where I am. Is it done? You hit start. No, you need to go into your photos app, like I said. Yeah. Triple click. Yeah. Guided access. Okay. And then you hit start. Okay. And now you are now trapped for all eternity in the photos app. Yeah. It says Could you click the whole time in there. Uh-huh. 29 seconds remaining. Uh-oh, she's got 29 seconds remaining. So what you're going to see is what happens when the minute's up. So to get out of it, you just bump, 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 and then you put in your code, either four sixes or six sixes to get out of it. So you can actually use this in about, okay, 11 seconds remaining. And what's going to happen in five, four, three, two, one, one and a half, zero, something, boom. If you didn't set a timer, you won't see I it. So. Yeah. I tried okay. to set the timer. It's okay. Here's the thing. I want to show you that guided access exists. Teaching a room of people how to use guided access is an absolute nightmare. I just want to show you that it's a possibility that it exists. Okay. To get out, we triple click. Bum, bum, bum. Again? No. Yeah, triple click again. Bum, bum, bum. And then put in the 6666 six, six, six passcode. And then hit end in the upper left hand corner. End right there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm out. And now you're out, and then you can leave the app, and I'm going to take her phone and take it off of my screen. And I'm going to put my phone back on my screen. I do some weird things with my phone. That's why guided access was probably being dumb with my phone, to give you an idea. Yeah. Is the guided access permanent, or does it one time set? So it will stay in there as long as you triple click. You can go back and change the pin later. The reason, believe it or not, the reason that I make everybody choose one single pin is we had someone forget their four number pin once and they were trapped in that app forever. Because here's the thing, in a worst case scenario, let me give you a worst case scenario. If you forget the pin, in a worst case scenario, you just let your phone die, right? Uh -huh. And then when it comes back, it's gonna ask for the main pin for your phone, the one that you put in for your fingerprint, stuff like that. The problem was this person did not have a pin on their phone. Oh, no. Therefore, it just was like, Ugh. So the only way I got their phone to work was I updated them to a beta software that was available for the iPhone, and it redid the, uh, the guided access Is pin. Is good to keep on? So you can keep it on. It will only activate with the triple click. As you've noticed, a triple click is a very unnatural motion, so you're not going to triple click by mistake. That's the that's a simple option. You're not going to triple click by mistake. But I might. Now, there is something that someone asked me to talk about in accessibility that I do not use, I do not see the purpose of, I don't like it, I don't care, but I'm going to show it to you because someone asked me to show you. It's something I see. Yeah. I'm the one who asked. Oh, you're the one who asked me. And I use it most of the time. So. <laughs> The reason is, I don't care, and it's strange, but let me continue with my statement. It's going to become more relevant soon when the home button doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> now, yeah, that's the next thing going away. Headphone jack went away first, then home button, then lightning charger. Oh, it's going to be an interesting evolution. But when the home button doesn't exist anymore, you're going to have something called assistive touch. Generally, what I don't like assistive touch is my thing is it just gets in the way. 
That's, that's my thing. When I'm watching a movie, I'm watching. What it is, is essentially a virtual home button on your screen. Now, up till the iPhone 7, I'm going to teach you another term. I taught you screen on time the other day. I'll teach you another term in the electronics industry that's not usually used by a lot of people. It's called MTBF. Anybody know what that stands for? Mean time before failure. Mean time before failure. So I had someone come up to me with an iPhone 4 the other day, and they were saying that the headphone jack isn't working anymore. And I went and I pressed their volume buttons, and the volume buttons didn't even press. Now on an iPhone 4, that MTBF is done. So the home button on an iPhone only has about 100,000 MTBF clicks. So you press your home button a couple times a day, you know. Yeah. But it only has about 1,000 MTBF clicks. So you can actually put on something called assistive touch, which gives you a fake home button. I'm trying to see exactly where it is. Yeah, so if you scroll up to where it says interaction, mm -hmm. you'll see something that's called assistive touch. Yeah. And if you turn it on, what you'll get is you'll get this little floating menu right here. He hates it. Yeah, he hates it. I hate it. We're in the same boat. Because it gets in the way. I don't it's in the way of what? I'll show you. I don't see the floating You have to turn it on. Oh, sorry. You gotta turn on assistive touch. Oh. If you're reading an email, if you're doing something like that, this just kind of gets in the way. If I'm watching a movie, I don't want to see a virtual home screen on my, I don't want to see a virtual home button on my screen. Oh, this guy. But some people like it because you can go in and you can get shortcuts to all kinds of places. It's not designed for normal users. It's designed for people who, who have hard, are hard of yeah. seeing, can't hear, different things like that. But you can lock screen, volume up, volume down. No, it's been around forever. When I, when I used it, I didn't have all those things. I just yeah. Had well, they've added a couple of things. Yeah. I can activate Siri. It was so home, long ago. I just had the one. Putting some custom things. I can put an uh, and get to the notification center. I can go all kinds of different places yeah. if I wanted to with that. How do you do that? that? You so you see the little button there? The button. It's a little button, and then it pops up. I don't. Oh, I guess I always had that. You have to turn on assistive touch. I did. Oh. No, you turn on switch control, not assistive so touch. I never hit the button. Switch control is going to drive you crazy. Uh, assistive touch. I didn't know you could do this. You're in settings. Uh oh, is he locked in the app? He's in the photos app still. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm technologically handicapped. That's Perhaps okay. the you need assistive touch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think an assistive touch is going to help. Uh, but settings, general. Accessibility, assistive touch. I hate it beyond all. Well, Richard, the yeah. explanation is that yeah. I learned it when my home button quit working. So he learned it when his home button didn't work. And it was yeah. great. Here's yeah. the cool thing though if you have an iPhone 7, your home button's doesn't fake. Doesn't matter. There's no MTBF. The home button's completely fake. If you have one of the newer MacBook Pros or the MacBooks, the trackpad is completely fake. It doesn't actually vibrate. If you have an iPhone 7, take your iPhone 7, turn it off. Try and press the home button. It doesn't do anything. The button doesn't really move on the iPhone 7. It's a fake movement. That's how they made it waterproof. There is no button. There's no actual button. Now, on the new Samsung Galaxy S8, what they've done is they've built the button into the screen. The big failure, the biggest failure with the new Samsung phone is they were trying to put the fingerprint reader on the phone underneath the screen. No, no, it's actually a really cool concept because you're going to go, oh, Rich, I'm going to see that in six months' time. <laughs> from a fruit company, but uh, <laughs> the, where Samsung fails, Apple will very likely succeed, if that makes sense. But what Samsung did that was a total failure is they put the fingerprint sensor on the back right next to the camera. Uh -huh. So the fingerprint sensor on the S8 is right next to the camera. The only saving grace is they also have iris scanning and facial recognition on the phone, so I feel like I'm not going to use the fingerprint sensor that much, uh -huh. if, that makes, if that makes pretty good sense there. Uh -huh. So, I don't use assistive touch, but... Now we're going to talk about the home button a bit because I want to talk about one more thing that's really, really, really annoying to me and I found a way to fix it. If you notice in iOS 10, even if you have Touch ID, you have to touch it to get your finger in and then you have to press it again. That's not the old behavior. You can bring back the old behavior. This is actually a really cool trick. You can bring back the old behavior. I don't have that even on here, but I'm going to show you. We're going to click back to accessibility. Keep assistive. Yeah, keep it. Uh, no, 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 no. Personally, turn it off. Uh, but uh, go to accessibility and you'll see something that says home button. Do you see that? Scroll down. It's a little under. Yeah. Home button. And then there's something on the bottom of home button that says rest finger to open. Do you see that? No. Yes. It's off, correct? No, it's on. It's on. It's on. That's a standard on? Rest finger to open? Yeah. Okay. So here's a weird thing. 
the standard behavior in the original iOS 10 was that you needed to turn that on. You used to have to click to wake it up and then click no, again. No. I guess they fixed it in a later yeah. software update and then everybody got it automatically. But it doesn't work Huh? Why? We're, we're going to get to Touch ID in a minute. We're going to get to Touch ID in a minute. So I guess that's a default now. So, But in iOS 10, if you remember when you originally got it, it was broken because you had to touch, and then you had to press the home button again after, even if you touched it. That was when it originally came out, and that was a feature that you could go ahead and control. So Assistive Touch, I would leave off, unless you have an older phone that's coming near its MTBF. Now when we're talking about older phones, let's talk about older phones for a second. How old is too old? Now my old answer to that question last year was, if your device does not have the lightning connector, it's too old. If it doesn't have the small connector, it's too old. I have revised my answer to that question now. If your device does not have the fingerprint reader, it's too old. 5C, sorry. Uh, but if your device doesn't have the fingerprint reader, it's too old in my, it's my personal and professional opinion, as it's a bit too old if it has that. But that is irrelevant. That's not to where we're going. Richard, we need to go now to the main screen of our device. Yeah. Richard, uh, I had uh, fingerprint uh, recognition, but somehow it's... So, it we're going to fingerprints in a couple minutes. Yeah. That's but down, it's disappeared. Though. It's down the list. We'll get there. So, I, I want us to go out to the main I screen. I reachability on, is that... What is reachability? Okay, let me show you what reachability is. This is only going to make sense if you have one of the bigger iPhones, if you have a 6 or a 6 Plus, if you have reachability on, if you double tap on the home button, not press, so you're not pressing it, you're just tapping it, and it's only going to work if you have Touch ID, only if you have the fingerprint sensor, you go, it's going to move all of the apps lower to you so you can use the phone with one hand. That's Ooh. what reachability is. Okay. So like, okay, let's say I've got my phone, I've got it in my left hand, okay? I need to reach that camera button, and I only have one hand free because I have a child or something in this hand. So if I click, if I tap, tap, I can reach the camera. I think it works. I can even tap, tap, and I can get the toggles. That's a really, yeah, no, 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 no. Not push, push. Tap, tap. There's a difference. So push, push is actually pushing the button. That's going to get you to the app switcher. Tap, tap will get you to reachability. It's not going to work on the smaller phones, so it's not going to work because you can touch the whole screen. But what's really interesting is the Samsung phones have their own version of that as well. They have their own tap tap, and it does that because the phone screens are a little too uh, are a little too big. I, I enabled it on my S7 just to play with it the other day. But I want to spit on the home screen because we're going to talk about the control center, and we'll talk about the notification pane as well later on. If you're on this main screen, I need you to swipe up from below where your screen starts. This is called Control Center. Yeah. Yep. Essentially, a lot of the stuff we can do in settings, we can do right here. Right. We can put the device on airplane mode, we can turn on the Wi-Fi, turn off the Wi-Fi, turn on the Bluetooth, do the screen brightness, everything like that. What we can also do, I'm just going to cover something that's later on the list, we'll talk about it now. We can turn on Do Not Disturb. Mm, yeah. What does that do? What does that do? Okay, so, we've probably all put our phone on silent before, yes? Yeah. And even when you put it in silent, you hear a buzz, buzz, yeah. buzz, every time something comes in. No, no, not ding, buzz. Oh, okay. Buzz is the vibrate, ding is the bing. Yeah. Okay, so you hear that? <laughs> when, you, when you turn it on, but when you turn it on silent, it still buzz. vibrates. Yeah. It still vibrates. Yeah. When you turn it on, uh, do not disturb, it will not vibrate. Oh. It, you will not get any notifications, whether your phone's on or not. That is how I teach the classes that I teach in the theater. Because do you think I need my Facebook messages coming up in the middle of the classes on the screen in the theater? If it comes up here, whatever, 20 people see it. If it comes up in the theater, sometimes I forget to turn it off. If it comes up in the theater, seven, 800 people see it, to give you an idea. Uh, just to give you a metric of how many people that I don't know how many took them home for their dogs and their sisters or whatever, I made 900 Google Photos handouts. I had 50 yeah, I left. I had 50 uh, left by the end. No, it's the same, it's the same handout you've already got. It's, 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 it's a duplicate of that handout. But that's the cool thing is I can go in now. When I turn on Do Not Disturb, here's the little moon. You see the little moon? The moon, the moon is Do Not Disturb. Here's the thing that's interesting about Do Not Disturb, though. When you turn on Do Not Disturb, it's not going to buzz, it's not going to beep, it's not going to do anything. But if the same person calls you two times within three minutes, the second call won't be silenced. So if it's an emergency or something like that, yeah. the second call won't be silenced. But you won't get all those sports center, da -da -da, da -da -da, or the CNN updates that someone else died. My God. 
Every 10 minutes, I get to CNN. It's like, this person died, and that person died, and that person died, and that. I don't know why Joni, if Joni loves Chachi, died, but I found that out at 2 o'clock in the morning three days ago. It's like, oh, look, my watch said no. The cool thing is, if you know when it's off or on? So if it's purple, it's on. It's on. Now, what's cool is, not only has my phone gone do not disturb, but so has my watch. Oh. Because they're tied together. So my Apple Watch has gone do not disturb as well. And then all of your notifications will come through. So what you'll notice is, like you'll see I have Facebook notifications here. If you watch back the video during the class that I did this morning, when I started the class, this little messenger thing right here yep. had zero messages on it. When we went through the class, it got four messages on it, but it never let me know what the messages were because I had Do Not Disturb turned on. So it showed me there were four messages there because people, I, I live on Facebook Messenger. So it showed me there were messages there, but to give you an idea, it didn't do any logical stuff with them there. Now, let's go back here. I want to talk about some other stuff that we're going to talk about in a bit. You'll see AirPlay. So, you, okay, hold on. There's two more things I forgot. This is to lock your rotation. So if you're laying in bed and you want to read an email the correct way, you put your head down, it's going to rotate around, it's going to be sideways. Yep. So you lock the screen. So it stays in this orientation when you read the email. You do that all the time. Uh, yeah, yeah. That you can lock the screen. He does that all the time. Now, you can also change the brightness up and down. I'm going to show you AirPlay, but I want you to very carefully not touch anything. You can click on AirPlay. Will this, will the brightness override the automatic setting? Yes, it will override the automatic setting. Click on AirPlay, but don't click on anything inside of AirPlay. When you click on AirPlay, you're going to see all the devices that you can AirPlay to. A lot of you will probably see Class Apple TV. Don't click it. I'm not. Okay. Because it'll mess up my recording, and it's just going to do really bad things. So please don't click anything. Um, but you'll see I have three different things you can AirPlay to. You can AirPlay to my Mac Mini. You can AirPlay to my Apple TV, which is what my laptop's AirPlaying to. Or you can AirPlay to my laptop, which is how I'm running everything. That's very dangerous. Uh, just click, click, click the black space up there. I don't want anybody to, to use that. Just click our so what is it doing? Up, up here. I will, I'll, sh I'll explain to you what it does as soon as everyone gets out of it. One click or Okay, click. it's fine. Just pre press your home button. One click. Press your home button. It doesn't matter what it is. Okay, because it would stop this recording. It would break the whole class if one we did it. Does. Yeah, one click does it. What that does is that allows you to wirelessly display on a TV. So I have an Apple TV plugged in down here, and that's how I'm doing everything. So what I'm doing in the theater... In the theater, I'm airplaying to my laptop, and then my laptop is going out to the display while I'm recording the display of the laptop at the same time. Here, I am sending, just so you know, I'm sending the display of my laptop to the TV while recording it, and then sending the display of my iPhone to my laptop, which is then sending it to the TV. Mm. <sighs> yes, it's insanity. It's fine, it's insanity. I realize it's insanity, I'm just making a statement. The thing we can touch is AirDrop, that's right next door to it. If you see AirDrop right there, everyone. we're going to choose AirDrop Everyone. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. So I click AirDrop. Out of, that. out of Apple TV. You can go back into the others. Out of AirPlay. I want you in AirDrop. Oh. AirDrop, which is next to AirPlay. Okay. So you see where it says AirDrop? I want you to go ahead and choose Everyone. Everybody. Everybody. And we choose everyone on the airdrop. It's not going to do anything right now. Don't worry about it. You pick something. Do all of our devices have the lightning connector, the small connector? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. If all of our devices have the lightning connector, yeah. we are golden. We'll talk about that later. Some of you might see something that says night shift underneath. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Look at my phone. What is the primary color? If you choose a primary color that's coming off of my phone right now, what is that primary color? Blue. 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 Well, it's a bluish white. Blue disturbs your sleep cycles at night. So when you turn on night shift, it removes the color blue from your screen and makes your screen more yellow. So it actually, yeah, it's called a blue light filter. On, on an Android phone, it'd be called a blue light filter. Yeah, it changed color. It actually well, changes the color. Black from the other time. Which, hey, well, yours is still black from the last time. You can't do much better than that. No, that's okay. You just turn off invert colors. Don't ask Siri to do it. She won't listen. Um, but you can turn on night shift. Now, how many of you don't know whether you have a 6 or a 6S or a 7 or you might not know? I think so a 6. You have a 5C. I know what you have. The C stands for um, <laughs> keeping it to myself. Yes, I'm keeping it to myself. That's a 6, right? Okay, so it could either be a 6 or a 6S or a 7. Well, that's not a 7, but here's the thing. How you would know, do you see the flashlight right here? Okay? I want you to try and press really hard on the flashlight. Really hard. Okay, 
Oh, if you're pressing really hard and it's not doing anything, then it's a 6 or a 5C or anything like that. But if you're pressing really hard and it's pulling up a menu like this, then you have a 6S or a 7. And what that is is because the screen has something on it called force touch. So what's cool is I can, I can choose how bright, only if you have a 6S or a 7, I can choose how bright I want the light to be by pressing down hard. But we can press that again and it goes off. <laughs> Here's the thing I want to show you, though. None of you are going to have this. What's really cool is you can actually use the screen on the 6S and the 7, this is not an official Apple app, to weigh things. Oh. Whoa. Okay. Wow. What do we need that for? Luggage. So, no, not for luggage. It's not going to work. <laughs> this weighs things up to a certain number of grams. Go to the post office. So what's cool is if you put something here, it will actually... Where, where did you go? So you don't stamp cost. It's a website. No, 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 no. It's not, it's not oh, a, it's oh, just, oh. this is not officially approved by Apple. Okay. Okay? But what's cool is you just take it and you put the object there yeah. and it'll weigh it. And what's cool is you can even tear it. Yeah. And I forgot to bring it, but what you can do is you can take, nobody has a spoon, uh, but you can actually take a spoon and you can put a spoon on there. I don't know if it'll work with my water and with my, uh, my clip here. Oh, there we go. So you see we've got that. This clip weighs, uh, weighs 12.51 grams. And if I wanted to weigh, let's say I wanted to weigh this, this pen. About a third of an ounce. I want to weigh this pen. So I can take this guy. Let me get it all on the screen. So, it has to be on the screen. Yes, it's using the screen to weigh it. This is just a really cool tech feature. And then wow, I can take the can. pen and put it on top and I can see what the pen weighs. Point because I've actually teared. Well, I don't know. Now the cool thing is how they recommend that you weigh things, this is really bad, is you, you take it and you put it in a spoon. What are you likely going to weigh in a spoon on your screen? Drugs. Oh. Drugs! <laughs> this is a pot dealer's best friend, let's be completely oh, honest. No, That's no. A, you you, you, you got to have a 6S to do that. You have to have a 6S or a 7 to well, be able to have it. Well, it's got to be the force screen. It's got to have the force touch screen. Okay. It's just a website. You can just Google, weigh stuff with my iPhone, and there's a website that does it. It's not an yeah, app or anything like that. Actually. That's why I can't give you the name of it. I just made yeah. a little... Success was the big one. No, 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 no. Success was the second one, not the big one. Yeah. It was the second one. Oh, yeah. right away. Yeah. So. Correct. I was just going by size. What is that? I can't. Turn off. Our turn. It'll go off. That's fine. It's off now. Okay. So let's talk about the other things down here on the bottom on the command center. We've got a clock. We've got a calculator. We've got a camera. If you scroll from right to left in the command center, you can actually see what's currently playing in audio. So the last thing you played or what's currently playing. And I'm able to scroll one more time. You're not able to do this. Trust me, none of you can do this, probably. Where'd you do this? You did what? Where, where I'm in here. I'm in the command center. Oh, I've scrolled just, up from the bottom. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm just going to swipe it where there's no buttons Yeah. from one side or the other. And that'll show you the music that's currently playing. Now, I can go one more step, which you can't go. My one more step I can go is I can see all my light bulbs in the house. And I can turn them on and off. It's because I have smart light bulbs. So I have smart light bulbs. That's why I can, uh, why I can do that there. So you have audible, but you swiped once. You can't swipe twice. Yeah. Yes, but it has to be compatible with the HomeKit standard that Apple has. So we've got that. We've got the control center done. Now here's the cool thing. We covered a couple of things in control center. I'm gonna just write them down so we can skip them. We can skip night shift. We can skip uh, do not disturb because we already did that. And now we're going to talk about managing storage. So we're going to talk about managing storage now. Now, we're going to talk about managing both types of storage that you have on your device. Let me just make sure we're logged in real quick. I, no, actually, I know we're logged in because that scale exists on the internet. So that was a dumb question to ask. So we're going to go to settings. Yep. Do you want us to turn off the airdrop? No, leave airdrop on. We're going to airdrop later. I just wanted to do it while we were there. We're going to leave airdrop on for everyone. We're going to settings. That's fine. That's fine. We're going to go to settings, and then we're going to scroll down to where it says storage, uh, settings, general, storage, and iCloud usage. Yep. There are two different types of storage you have on your Apple device, local and cloud. I'm pretty sure we know how useless the cloud one is, but uh, that's a story for another time. Let's talk about local storage real quick. Do you see where it says storage, just normal storage on the top? Yeah. Click to where it says manage storage. 
This is going to show you what's taking up all of your space oh, yeah. on your device. And you may be surprised. Trust oh. me, you may be surprised. I am. Now, here's the cool thing. There's some apps showing up like Downcast and VLC, and some of you are going, what are those apps? And Delete that them. answer is tomorrow. So tomorrow we're going to talk What? Delete them. No, no, no. Okay. These are intentionally oh, here. Oh, okay. No, no, these are intentionally here. I'm going to show you tomorrow. These two apps you're going to learn to love tomorrow. But Google Photos is a big app because it's got a cache of photos. I allow it to make a big cache, even though it doesn't have anything downloaded. I allow it to make a big cache, but I have 42 gigs just of stuff in my camera roll. That's my 6,700 pictures. It's just stuff in my camera roll. But you can see what's used and what's available. So this is a lot more useful than the About screen. I guarantee wow. most of you, number one is photos and camera, if not music, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, it's music. So it might be music. And you can actually go in, if it's music, and you can individually delete albums, you can actually see what's taking up your space. Because in the other way, you can just see, okay, what's taking up my space? Apps are taking up my I space. Got rid of a third of my or phone. I have no apps yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. I got rid of a third yeah. of my phone. Uh, Messenger is taking up yeah. like pretty, uh, pretty much space. How much? What's the number? Uh, four, uh, 430. Megabytes? That's not that much space. That's not that much. But if I delete some of the stuff out of my Messenger... So here's the thing. Sometimes Messenger and Facebook will take up a significant amount of space. It's because they cache things. If you see Messenger or Facebook taking up a lot of space, the answer to your question is delete Messenger and reinstall it. And then that space will, will come back. Yeah. It's just, it's cached up a whole bunch of photos and videos and stuff like that there. But you can delete it. You can delete the individual messages, but I message far too many people to be able to delete individual messages. Yeah, in the back. Uh, two questions. The, because I have iCloud, so my photo is only three. I guess that's the other caching, right? Um, yes, yes. Your photo is only three gigs, yeah. Number two, music. I see you got a couple gigs there. Anything can do about music to reduce it? So we'll talk about, let's... Let's put that on the table for tomorrow. We're going to talk about Google Play Music tomorrow, oh, wow. which is very interesting. Yeah, we'll talk about Google Play Music. The one thing I won't talk about, because it frustrates me to no end, is Apple Music. Mm -hmm. uh, they did a really bad idea in Apple Music, because they, they integrated it too much into the local music app, and it just confuses people. So I'm going to show you Google Play Music, which is part of YouTube Red as well. Now, on Android, your storage is buried in different places. I wish there were. Here's the big problem with teaching an Android class. I will never teach an Android class because here's the thing you don't realize. All of us that are following on iPhones, you can all follow me. If you have a Samsung Galaxy S6 or S7 or S8, things are in different places across those three phones. Wow. So I'd have to have one class for the S6, one for the S7, one for the S8, one for that phone. I'd have to have different classes for different things, and it's just like, shoot me, I don't want to do that. So, but I want to go back to where it says storage and iCloud usage. And I want to go to iCloud and click Manage Storage under iCloud. Mm -hmm. Those of you that are connected to iLounge, the network yep. from before, should see in a couple seconds. It's going to take us a couple seconds to compute, but it's going to show you what's taking up all of your iCloud storage space. Now, what you will notice is my biggest thing take, I only have five gigs of iCloud storage space. The biggest thing taking up my iCloud storage space is something you're going to see tonight. So my presentation that I made for the... Uh, for the scavenger hunt, you don't have to go anywhere for the scavenger hunt, the scavenger hunt's on your phone. The presentation I made for the scavenger hunt is like one gig, because it's got videos and stuff like that, and for some reason I just decided to back it up to the iCloud, so I'd have it across all my devices. It's a keynote presentation and it's gigantic, but I guarantee for a lot of you, number one thing there is photos and camera, right? Photos and videos, iCloud photo library, it probably mm -hmm. says, correct? Mm -hmm. How do you get rid of one of these? Like, so, the game my granddaughter so here's playing. what we're gonna do. You can just you can click in and you can get rid of it. So if you have iCloud Photo Library on there, go ahead and click it. Good, then smile. Then smile. You're good. I got photos and So it'll say iCloud Photo Library. I think I might steal her phone again. Or I need storage. Because I can safely put this on the screen. Manage storage. Okay. I've got her I've got her thing. Photos and camera. So I don't use iCloud Photo Library. She uses iCloud Photo Library. I'm stealing her phone for a minute. So I've clicked on iCloud Photo Library right here, and you do this when you're home, there's a button that says, delete the iCloud photo library. Disable Ooh. and delete. Well, wait a minute, we're in the wrong spot. If you don't have it, then oh, you smile. Manage, you're fine, we manage, don't want it. That's what's eating all your iCloud space. Oh, space. Storage. storage in iCloud, and then we're gonna click on iCloud, and you I should see iCloud photo library. Yeah. 
we're going to say disable and delete Manage after after, Google, after Photos. Google Photos has time to back your things up. So give it about a month or so. After that happens, then we go disable and delete, and it will disable and delete it. But then there's another problem. We're still paying for the 50 gigs of iCloud storage, 99 cents a month. Am I correct in that assumption? That's right. So how do we knock that down? I want to show you how we knock that down. I'm going to take our phone off the screen. I'm going to put my phone back on the screen. So the thing why I can't show you on her phone because I need an Apple password to do it. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to settings. Actually, we're going to kill a couple of birds with one stone. I didn't put this in perfect order, but that's okay. We're going to go to settings, general. We're going to go to settings, not general, and we're going to scroll down to where it says iCloud. So we're going to settings, and we're going to scroll down to where it says iCloud. Yeah. Uh, and then you will see storage right here. Scroll down, it's there, not in general, it's just in normal settings. Not in general? I don't find that one. No, I don't. It's there. Under on her device, it's not. Aha, uh -huh. okay. You're not going to find it because they moved it. I realize what's going on. <laughs> I don't have the most up to date software on my phone intentionally because I'm afraid it's going to break something well, in what I'm doing. Yeah, mine's right up here. Right it's now. all the way on the top of your settings. Okay, thank you. Oh, up here. Yes, all the way to the top of the settings. Yours is on a slight, so where your name is on the top? Yeah. 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 Click on your name on the top of the device. Click there. Click there. I'm checking where it is because it's a little bit different. And then once you click there, you can click on iCloud. So click on your name and then click on iCloud. Mine's going to be in a, yep, yep. That's where we want to be. Do you see where it says storage? If it doesn't show your iCloud, just leave it be. Leave it be. Leave it be. You see where it says, no, it's not off. You see where it says storage, yeah, not storage. cloud storage. Yeah. Okay, you have your iCloud off. That's okay. Mine leave it be. Fit. I'm going to show you this for those of you that already have it on. So you can see those of you that already have iCloud set up. You may not have it on. I'm just going to show you how you would turn it off if you happen to have it on. Where it says storage, we're going to click where it says manage storage. Wait a minute. I'm under storage, but it doesn't. Click on store. Yeah, you're, you're already there. Okay, so here's the problem. They changed the layout in the newer iPhone, in the newer iOS software, which I haven't updated. The reason I haven't updated is it might not work with all of my presentations and things like that. So I will show you real quick. So you see it says that she's got used 14.79 gigs of 50 gigs. You see that there? Yeah. So used 14.79 of 50 gigs. If I click on it, there's a button that says change storage plan. Mm -hmm. If I hit change storage plan, there's going to be a button inside of there that says downgrade. It's a very hidden button. It's, you have to scroll down through all the paid storage plans. And on the bottom, there's a button that says downgrade. downgrade. I like to mention, this is the truth, people have spent more money on iCloud storage upgrades in October, November, and December of last year, then AOL and Yahoo together are worth as companies. No. That's a true number. Mm, that's a AOL good. and Yahoo together are worth less than $8 billion. People yeah. spent about $8 billion in iCloud storage upgrades. Is that in the uh, server? Uh, oh, yeah. Is it built into the server? Let me show you this. Let me show you this. I want to finish. You're, this is impossible for us all to follow around, so I don't want you to raise your hand and say you can't find it because it's a little different on everybody's device. I want to finish showing you this. You see, it's going to show you all the things you can pay for, yeah. and on the bottom it's going to say downgrade options. Downgrade options. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can downgrade to the free tier once you've got your stuff up to Google Photos. When you downgrade, it's going to delete that iCloud photo library. So why I want to do it on my phone is it's going to ask you for the password, which I don't want to use your Apple password, yep. and do it on there. Thank you. Now. Moving on, we've talked about the storage. Yeah. Just one question. Yeah. On this app choosing iCloud, it has photos on. Uh huh. When I go to Google Photos, what See, I, I only have photos off. Just leave it. Just leave it. You're going to turn photos off after Google Photos backs all of your stuff up. Yes. I can't hear you. I have one question. What's yep. the difference between iCloud Backup and iCloud Drive? iCloud Drive is like Dropbox. It's for storing your files and things like that. Okay. iCloud Backup, we will address in the questions class. I want to okay. table that for the questions okay. class. Yeah. Okay. 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 I got 12.7 total. Yeah. Yeah. I've got used 10.7, 4.3 
is the user. Uh huh. Because if I don't have a Wi-Fi connection and I can't yep. access yep. whatever, I want to use this and it has some music. Music, yeah. So how, how can I reduce? I mean, it's taking a big chunk of my. Now I only have one point seven yeah. gigabytes. So here's the problem. He's got a little Android. Or that's a, no, it's yeah, not the one. It's an iPhone. iPhone. So what I use as far as music is concerned, I'm gonna is I don't use Apple Music. I don't use the Apple Music software. We'll talk about that in apps tomorrow. Is the way that I do it. Now, remember, I, I didn't know he moved sides. Remember, I was talking about mean time before failure. Those buttons. Yes. MCBF. Those is completely failed. There it is. I can't even listen to my. There music. There it is. You can't even listen to his music because the. Uh, the mean time before failure is up on those buttons. So, hey, I didn't even know. I was like, Richard, oh, uh, Richard, yeah. how do we pay for the iCloud storage? Is it embedded in the server? You know, it's yeah. embedded into your iTunes account. Yeah. Oh. It's in your iTunes account. But you would, you would get a bill once a month. You get a bill once a month that says 99 cents you oh, no, pay for the iCloud store. I've never gotten that. Then you're happy. Ha ha, it's probably not backed up anything. Google Photos is going to be backing up all those things. Now, I'm going to go to AirDrop last. I'm going to move some stuff to tomorrow because of just time. But I want to show you a couple of more things. I'm circling three things that I'm going to move to tomorrow. So VPN. Safari saved passwords and the SanDisk Connect wireless flash drive I'm going to show you tomorrow. This is a new class. I didn't know how long it's going to take, but I want to spend a nice amount of time talking about AirDrop, reorganizing apps, spotlight search, location services, and notifications, and device reset. So those are the last few things we're going to talk about today. We're tabling VPN, Safari saved passwords, and SanDisk Connect wireless flash drive to the apps class tomorrow. What about the thumbprint? Oh, I forgot the thumbprint. You're right. What about the thumbprint? So the thumbprint lies in settings, uh, and then it's in touch ID and passcode. Normal settings. Settings. Touch ID and passcode. And when you click there, you're going to have to actually put in your passcode. So you can touch it. Go to settings, touch ID and passcode. And you're going to put in your passcode. The best way to make Touch ID actually work is to add multiple fingers, add the same finger multiple times. Where it so says add a fingerprint. Add a fingerprint. You can add up to five fingerprints, add the same finger multiple times. Now I have this finger in twice and this finger in twice. Mm -hmm. Now when I put my finger down, what you'll notice is it's going to light up which one does it. See, that's finger one. Touch ID. And that's middle finger, even though it's not a middle finger. Just do it on that screen. Yep. So it'll say add fingerprint. You don't need to add it right now. I'm just telling you what I do is I add the same finger twice. And if you add the same finger twice, you're golden. It works really cool. You add the same finger twice. Yeah. I have it, but I don't know that I did it twice. No, you want to add, see where it says add a fingerprint, the little blue thing? Later, 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 later. Yeah. later, later. Yeah. What I recommend is, this is my recommendation, thumb, 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 big finger. I know they're waiting outside. It says in the daily program it's closed for a class. Eh, I'll leave it be. Let me just call my assistant real quick. Uh, five, two, one, seven, four. I have a riot about to go on outside. Yeah. What do you need, Gold? Let me just let me have Rolando handle the riot. Sorry, guys, I don't mean to, to stop this, but uh, where is it? Where's Hi, Pastor Rolando. That's who's riot. Hey, Rolando, I got a riot going on outside the eye lounge. Can you come quiet it down? They're banging on the doors. Okay, bye. Okay, cool. Rolando's come to quiet it down the riot. It's okay. It does say in the daily program we're closed for a class, but nobody reads. It says on the outside when we close the class, but it's okay. So, we add the same finger multiple times. Make sense? Yeah. So, we're not going to add the same finger multiple times right now, but we add the same finger multiple times. Okay. Okay. Now, let's talk about AirDrop. Yeah. I want to talk about AirDrop. Right. We should have all turned on AirDrop available for everyone. Yeah. So, when we scrolled up, we clicked on AirDrop, and we chose everyone. Cool? Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. AirDrop. Everyone. Right. Now, what is the purpose of AirDrop? Do we all know the purpose no. of AirDrop? No. Photographs. Large. Uh, Anything. Anything. That's the quick answer. You can AirDrop photos. You can AirDrop contacts. You can AirDrop documents. You can AirDrop all yeah. kinds of different things. So you can AirDrop anything you want to. So we've got our Photos app. Let's go ahead and open our Photos app. I want you to go ahead and choose a <laughs> single photo. 
Let's choose the picture of me as a child. And you will see a little button that is a box with an arrow in it. Do you see that right down there? Yeah. Box with an arrow. We're going to click on that little box with an arrow. And we've got my picture that shows up. Can we see that? Well, we've got a picture that shows up. My picture shows up on mine. And then what you'll see is you'll see other people's phones. This is why I had you name your phone the other day. Oh. So you'll see other people's phones. So John, where's John? He's got an iPhone 6. Which one's uh, John with the iPhone 6? Uh-oh, they both have iPhone 6s. Who are these people? Battle to the death. Oh, wait a minute. This is everyone around you. Oh, no, it just picks it up. That's why we chose everyone. Oh. This is everybody around you. So if I go in, I've got John. And I go to John. I got it. Well, which John it was. It's that John. I've got Olga. I click Olga. Well, when John accepts it, it goes, boop, boop, boop. So I just hit the little share button and then I see the people right there that are on my screen. Cool. So what I can do is I can accept it, I can decline it, I can do all of these different things. You can share. Now it's difficult to show in a room of 20 people, but you can actually. To everybody. So go ahead and share it to iPhone. There's one that's called iPhone that you'll see. Do I accept it? The share button is when you click on something, it's the little box with the arrow in it. Yeah. Oh. And you see she shared it. Now when she shares it, what I see is I see a preview of the picture there. Correct? Now you can say accept if you want. You see I see a preview of the picture. There's something called airdrop cards that I want to show you. It's a great website. It's called airdrop cards and what it does is it gives you little cards that you can actually airdrop to people. Now they're not the nicest cards sometimes, but I want to show you some cards. So you'll see, since it shows you a preview of the picture, why I changed my phone. Remember I said I changed my phone's name to iPhone? To just iPhone? So they, they don't know who's sending it. So I have all of these cards, I'll show you some of them, that you just airdrop it and you say, I hope you get that promotion, you deserve it. Trevor doesn't deserve it. Trevor's a wanker. Uh, oh, here's iPhone. I challenge you to a stare off. It's been a while. I miss you. Tag your it. So imagine if you're sitting in a restaurant, someone's using their iPhone. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit to airdrop it to someone. And I can see where's Roberta. There's Roberta. If I hit Roberta's, something will pop up on her phone that says, Tag, you're it. Oh, how funny. You're yelling Roberta. Well, it's That's why you there see kids on the phone all the time. Yeah. So no, what I did is we were sitting at Bonefish uh, Grill having breakfast the other day. Mm -hmm. So we're sitting at Bonefish Grill out in uh, having breakfast, and I sent someone this one that said, I'm watching you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just popped up on our air. These are from a from a website called airdropcards.com. Oh, and it comes into this. And then it, you just download them and then you use them to creep people out. Okay. Um, like I can send it to Vivian. Where's Vivian? So if I click on Vivian, it's going to say, I'm watching you in your little airdrop preview. Just to scare the heck out of someone. Roberta declined me. Roberta declined you. Oh. Oh. I got that yesterday from somebody. So that's where it gets cool. And I found the me. Hello. Hello. I'm getting declined by everybody. Yeah. We're two seconds, guys. Uh, we're teaching a class. We're available again at 2.30. It says that in the daily program, if you've got a question. Yeah, it's available again at 2.30. Nobody's Skyline. asking me to get anything. Bye. Okay, so let's continue on. We're going to ignore the angry masses that have come out of that door for some reason. I see them. I hear them. I called Rolando to take care of them. Um, so we've got that, and we're going, we've talked about airdrop. I want to go ahead and show you something else about airdrop. You can essentially airdrop anything. So you can airdrop contacts if you wanted to. So you can go into your contacts app. They're all it's okay. In. They're all coming in. We can go... The I Lounge, it says in the back of the daily program, opens at 2.30 after the class. No, it says it's staffed from 2, but it does also say in the staff hours it's closed during classes. It'll be back open at 2.30. Okay, it'll say it'll be back open at 2.30. Okay. Okay, so we're inside of contacts. And there's a button on the bottom that says share contact. There's a button on the bottom that says share contact. No. Yep. Go into a contact, click on a specific contact, 
And you'll hit share contact. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you'll see that you can actually share the contacts. So yeah. with anyone you share, want to. Share, 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 share with the where the, oh, you don't have any. It's just local. It's just within the room. Now, on the Mac, they've created something called Mail Drop. Mm -hmm. That allows you to share files like AirDrop between people that use the Mail app on the Mac. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool. We've got AirDrop and we've got MailDrop. So it's really quite a cool. Does system. AirDrop limit you to within the router? No, AirDrop limits you within Wi Fi and Bluetooth range. So it's even closer than within the router. So we can only airdrop within here. Celebrity Wi-Fi is a much bigger well, 30 router. 30 meters is probably really Yeah, just within this room. I would never demo airdrop in the theater because it would break everyone's airdrop because there's oh. 900 people. Yeah. Also understand, even though you have airdrop everyone on, in order, to, in order to receive airdrop, you must have your device uh, screen on. If the screen's not on, airdrop is off. So if the screen's not on, Wi-Fi. You need to have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on, but they don't need to be connected to anything. Oh, really? Oh. So they don't need to be connected to anything. They need to be on, but not connected to anything. Oh. I didn't know that. That's cool. Makes sense? Makes sense. Yes. Can we transfer between our iPhones and our Macs? Yes. Oh, yeah. So this works between iPhones and iPads that have the lightning connector. So they have to have a newer, so the thing is it won't work on your phone. Because AirDrop uses a newer type of Bluetooth than they, they change the Bluetooth the same time they change the connector. So good way to say, you can get between any one that has a connector and any Mac 2011 or later. If you've noticed, I've come in every day because my computer won't print. So I've come in every day and I've airdropped the class file to one of okay, these computers. I so I airdropped the class file to one of those computers and then I print it from one of these computers. Except which is very, very useful. I can go in and I can do it in that way. Great. Now, so that's airdrop. I want to be very clear. Oh, any place that you funny. see, any place that you see this little share button, you can airdrop. Mm -hmm. Any place you see the share button, you can airdrop. So if you're doing a pages file or a keynote file or a number file, or you have something in a PDF file, you can airdrop. Anywhere you can send an email or send an attachment, you can go ahead and you can airdrop, which is really quite cool. Now the last three things we're going to talk about today, actually uh, four things we're going to talk about today, is reorganizing apps. Just, just before you go on, yep. can you do it from inside Safari? Yes. Okay. So if you're on a website, I'll give you an example. He said, can you do it from inside Safari? Let's say I have this scale. Who has a 5 who has a 6S or a 7? 6S or a 7? Okay. So I have this scale. You see where the little share button is right there? I'll turn it this way. Little share button shows up right there. If I hit that little share button, uh, what's your name? You have this, this seven. What's the name of your iPhone? NEA. NEA. Because it's not going to make sense on anybody else's phone. You can do it. You can do it mine. You still mine. Okay. Where's Robert? Alan. 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 I, st I always. There, there, there. Where? There, okay. There, there. So if I hit that, it'll send the link to Alan's phone. No, that's fine. So yes. That's the anywhere. Plus sign. Airdrop turned on. That's the you plus have sign. To, that's the little. That's the little box with the arrow coming yeah. out of it. So box with an arrow coming out of it, that's the little box with the arrow coming yeah, out of it. Secure. That's available for that. Now, what is the plus sign beside it? The plus sign is to make a, uh, just to add a new tab. I can just add a new tab with the plus sign. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think so, on my iMac, it'll come up with a menu where it says... Yes, you can right click and you can air yeah. share and yeah. airdrop. Yeah. you got to realize that a Mac is a little bit different in layout than an iPhone or an iPad because that's a mouse mm -hmm. operating system versus right. a touch operating right. system. Now. Or reorganizing apps? Yes, your question. On, on, the, on the Safari, when you do the airdrop, it just gives you the link. It just gives you the link, yes. Okay. It just gives you the link. Reorganizing apps. How many of you have apps and it's just a mess? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't have two, two levels. You have too many. I know. Now, I know here's the thing. Apps that I like don't go in folders. You know how to delete an app, right? If you hold down on an yeah. app, it'll start yeah. jiggling. Right. Something cool that you're able to do in iOS 10 is you can delete useless apps. Like, let's say, for some reason, you didn't want to use the calendar app anymore. You had a better calendar app. You can delete it. You didn't want to use the notes app. You can delete it. You have a better calculator. You can delete it. You can actually delete the built-in apps. One of the ones I delete, I always delete the weather app and the stock app because I have far better weather and stock apps than Apple does. You can't delete ones that are system functions. You can't delete Safari. You can't delete photos. You can't delete camera. But you can delete the mail app, to give you an idea. You can go ahead and you can delete the mail app as well. 
to do that? Why? Yeah, because we're going to talk about that uh, in yeah. the Gmail class. Yeah. In the Gmail oh, class, right. it's because instead of mail, you're going to use the Gmail application right. in order to send email. Right. Now, if you need to reorganize apps, let's say I needed to get an app from this page right here. Let's say I need to get this scale from this page to my front page. Yeah. Now, you can do it the hard way or the easy way. An old assistant of mine found out the easy way to do this. It's called riding the train. That's what he calls it. Okay? This is something I learned for reorganizing apps. I call it riding the train. What you do is you take one app out of your bottom bar. Oh. <laughs> All right. It's being stupid. Hold on. Let me not open that up. Which one am I going to take out? So if I move it out, Man. then I put the pressure scale on the train. Oh, that's neat. I'm going to go chugga, 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 chugga. <laughs> Choo choo, done. Well, pretty good. I put it down. I put it down, and then I used my. Space. I just I just moved it this way. It's that's hard a, to do on the. Uh, you just move it that trip. way, and then I move it up, and then once I've let it ride the train. Uh, oh, that's clever. Once I let, I didn't come up with this. My old assistant came up with it. He's like, he's like, you gotta let it ride the train. I was like, what are you talking about, right. David? You're crazy. Train to do what? <laughs> <laughs> but we let it ride the train and we can go from one to the other. Yeah, that's great. Also, you can take any two apps and you can combine them by putting them on top yeah. of each other and you put it in a folder. Oh. Someone asked me the other day, though, how to rename the folder. Do you know how to rename the folder? No. You just click that little X right there and you say test. Oh. And then it renames the folder right there, which is what's really, really cool. So oh. rename the folder. Are there uh -oh. apps? You got apps? Yep, you got a bunch of different apps in a different app folder. Spotlight search. Now, here's the thing. I have 323 apps. Do you think I know where those apps are? Nope. No. When I'm teaching an apps class, do you think I'm nice and organized and have a folder that says apps class? No. What you saw me doing on stage, what you didn't know or not, is every time I would do something, I would pull down the screen and I would just search for translate. If Google Translate is the next app, I would open up translate and it was there. Then I would go to Duolingo. I'll show you. I have no clue where things are on my phone. So I'm just taking from any app, and I'm just swiping down. So you swipe down. Don't hit the app, just swipe down. And you'll get a search box. Where do you swipe from? Anywhere. Oh, you're jiggling. You're still, you're still oh, in choo-choo mode. You need not be in choo-choo mode. You have to be out of choo-choo. How do you get out of jiggling? Just hit the home button. Button on the front, it'll get you out of jiggling. So you can search for apps. This is how I search for apps 100% of the time. I don't know where any of my apps are. When I'm doing a class, I mean, I know where Google Photos is. Today was a really easy class to do. But what you notice is when I got to that uh, photo scan app, I actually just went ahead and typed in photo scan. When I got it right there, I got the photo scan app. Simple, done, easy. Photo scan app. Yeah, Rolando, you're a little late for the riots. They all broke in. Yeah, they all broke in. Uh, so we got the photo scan app. Very, very easy, but just to give you an idea of how I do that. Now, we run these apps, and that's spotlight search. If you pull down, you get the spotlight search. Mm -hmm. Last three things we're going to talk about today in, in about 10 minutes' time uh, is location services, which I'm probably going to table because that's a little bit more than 10 minutes. I'm going to put that in the, in the questions class. Uh, so location services we're going to skip. We're going to talk about notifications and device reset. And then everything else, I'm, we, I'm not going to not cover something on this sheet, if that makes sense. I'm, gonna, I'm writing the class as I go, because I usually do this as one class, so I added more there. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, notifications and device reset, and then we'll be good for the day. We're going to click on settings, and we're going to scroll down to where it says notifications. Do you see that? Yep. yep. So... Yeah, settings, notifications. Scroll down to where it says notifications. This is going to show you all the apps that can send you notifications, all the apps that can send you crap to put on your screen and pop up and things like that. So I have all kinds of different apps that want to send me notifications. You can turn off individual apps. So if an app is driving you crazy, you go to notifications, and you see where it says, so click on a single app. doesn't matter which one. See where it says allow notifications? Boom, done. No more notifications. Does it say battery? No, it just doesn't bother you. If you don't want to know every time someone dies on CNN, yeah. you know, you can turn off CNN's notifications. You only get stuff from CNN when it happens. 
but I leave it because you can actually go into CNN's notification preferences and say, hey, only let me know if this and this happens, and they have different categories, like top news. It wasn't top news that Chachi died, but you know, or no, that Joni, Ch Chachi's still alive, yeah, jo Joni died, Chachi's still alive. But I can go in and I can get all those different things in notifications. The last thing I want to talk about today, and I know, let me just write group one. I know what we didn't co cover, G-R-O-U-P one. So we'll pick this up tomorrow or on the questions class. The last thing I want to cover today is resetting of your device. What do I mean by resetting of your device? I don't want to scare anybody, but we're going to talk, we're going to go to settings, general. So you're going to go back from notifications, go back to normal settings, settings, general, and scroll down to where it says reset. Yeah. Don't worry, we're not going to reset anything. Okay, so there is not just one reset button on the iPhone. On the Android phones, there are multiple. There's one essential reset button that resets the whole device. On the iPhone, you can reset a lot of different things. So this one is called Reset All Settings. This is not going to remove any content from your device, just to give you an idea. It's just going to reset all the settings so they're back as they are, to the lock screens as it normally comes if you mess something up. Now, when you go to an Apple store and you say, my battery life's not doing it or something like that, one of the first things they'll do after that RAM clear is all reset settings. all settings. That does not erase anything. I'm not going to do it, but it doesn't erase anything. Where is that? It's in se time. settings, general, reset. So reset all settings just resets the settings. Do you see this button? This is the one we try never to press. Erase. Erase, Erase all content and settings. That will make your phone blank. blank. To do that, though, you need your Apple password, just so you know. Good. So if you erase all content and settings, you can't, do it accidentally. you can't do it accidentally. Do you see where it says reset network settings? Mm -hmm. If you wanted to reset, if you had something acting up with your Wi-Fi or your Bluetooth, you would hit reset network settings, and it would erase all of your previously connected Wi-Fi networks and all of your previously connected Bluetooth devices. Oh. And it would just reset that to give you an idea. You'll see reset keyboard dictionary. Now sometimes the keyboard starts spelling things wrong, starts learning things wrong. It learns your last name if you have a weird last name. If you wanted to reset that dictionary to as it comes, you can reset it. Reset home screen layout. You know when you get the phone and it's got the camera in the upper right hand corner and then everything else like that? If you hit reset home screen layout, it will set your phone up home screen as it originally was. So to put all the Apple apps on the first screen and then put all of your other apps in alphabetical order on screen two through whatever. So in no folders or anything, it's a nice way to quickly find your apps. Um, and the last one is reset location and privacy. What we're going to uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about apps tomorrow. But I'm going to talk about in the questions class. We're going to go because that was a question. So we're going to talk about the location stuff. I wanted to see if I could fit it in today. But we're going to talk about location services in the questions class, as well as how to save. I know this is a question a lot of you have. How to save passwords yes. Yes. across your devices. I had it on today's class, but the timing in today's class. I've never tested the timing of this exact class before. VPN is something we're going to talk about tomorrow when we talk about advanced apps. We're going to talk about VPN, as well as my friend right here, the SanDisk Connect Wireless Flash Drive. So what happens is I put things off, but I eventually get to them. So tomorrow we're doing apps. We're going to talk about how to add movies and music to your phone or tablet without iTunes. How to add documents to your phone or tablet without iTunes. These are apps that will not translate well to an apps class. What I mean by that is these are apps that will cause far too many questions in the theater. Yeah. People are going to be like, huh? What do you mean? So we can spend 10 minutes on every app tomorrow, if that makes sense, instead of a minute and a half on every app. So I'm going to show you some different apps. I am going to show you an app that I helped create as well, and I'll give you the disclaimer on that, because I believe it's right that I give a disclaimer, because I'm pushing something that I helped create, but I think it's very useful. I'm going to show you a stock trading app that has zero commissions. Really? It's zero commissions. It's going to put all the big banks out of business. It's a wonderful, cool. wonderful app. Yeah. Along with, we're going to look at VPN, the SanDisk Connect, uh, those are the only two we didn't, I think the only thing we didn't get to is VPN, Sandus Connect. I'm going to move location services and Safari Save Passwords with iCloud Keychain to the questions class, if that makes sense. Yeah? How, how did you do RAM reset again? RAM reset again. Cool question. He said, I know it was yesterday, but I want to show everybody one more time because he asked yeah. a good question and we've got three to four minutes till we can do it. You need to be on this screen, on your home screen, mm -hmm. and you're going to hold down 
the power button hold until the slide to power off thing comes up. And then hold down the home button for about eight seconds. Six, seven, eight. You need to be on this screen. If you're on this screen when you do it, then it's just going to pull up Siri. Yeah. So if you're on this screen when you do it, and you try it, it's going to go, no, I'm Siri. I'm, no, actually, you might still do it. No, it's going to just say, no, I'm Siri eventually. It might give me oh. some. Yeah. And is it good to do that sure frequently? You can do it every so often. It's not that big of a deal. If your device is slowing down, you can go ahead and you can do that there just to give you a little idea. Will you show us how to use the telephone tomorrow, too? You did it You're yesterday. talking about the Wi-Fi calling thing? Yeah. Okay. So what we can do is we can type in, we can write down Wi-Fi calling. This is what I'm going to add to your class. Okay. I have to keep them separate. So, cool. Tomorrow is apps. So we're going to be talking about all of the, the it, it's advanced apps. It's not... We can talk about HBO. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, we can. I because I have HBO. I was watching John Oliver at lunch today. So oh, yes, I. That. That's what I was watching at lunch. I have the newest John Oliver segment. If you want to airdrop it, but that's it for now. I will see you guys tomorrow. Uh, no theater class tomorrow. We have a general questions class. A general questions thing. It's going to be a zoo. Yeah. Stay for your questions thing. I'm doing a questions thing for everyone. That's for like an hour in Cellar Masters. Just sleep in tomorrow, okay? Sleep in. There's no. It's not going to be a. It's not going to be a class. It's going to be people just coming and asking questions and stuff like but, that. But this class continues. Tomorrow. This class continues tomorrow. This class continues every C day until the last C day. So we have something on. The next C day, nothing Lisbon afternoon. 2 p.m. Lisbon afternoon. <laughs> Actually, no, I have a I have a pizza date Lisbon afternoon. So 2 p.m. Lisbon afternoon, pizza date. I'll give you one more piece of information. Richard, you might want to review the uh, Google um, uh, Photos uh, on the last day. Yes, okay. on the last day we're going to do Google Photos in here again. I will have you write down one more thing. Nostra, N O S T R A, Nostra Italia, Nostra Italia. That is the name of the place in Lisbon where I get my ice cream. It's right off. Is it right off the? It's dock? right off the square, the main off square in Lisbon. Left or right? Oh, uh, You're getting off the dock. You're going. You're going straight to the left. You'll get to the main square. It's on the right of the main square. It's called Nostra Italia. They'll give you a menu. The last secret. I, every time I've gotten in an elevator with someone for the past three days, they've all asked me what the name of the ice cream place in Lisbon is. The last three days. It's like what's the name of the ice cream place in Lisbon? It's called Nostra. Italia. It's in Lisbon, right off the main square. You might see me there after I finish my pizza. But elsewise, I will see you tomorrow in here at 1 o'clock. That's it. Bye!